Hi, I'm Unshuan, and you're listening to Do Not Click. Check, check, one, two. You're listening to... I'm with the mother of unicorns <laughs> and the Khaleesi of our hearts. That's so funny. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, but you're a Game of Thrones fan? I was until they started killing. I you mean, they were they killed so many people. I had to mm. stop. It was just getting too much. Ah, uh, yeah. Have to reconvert you. Is so the last season? You can take one more season. No, I don't know. I had to stop after the red wedding. Oh yeah, yeah. That. That fucked me up really bad. Right. Yeah, I had to take a walk and like compose myself. Yeah. Like what on earth just happened? The right? worst part was the stabbing of the pregnant woman. Oh I, God, I couldn't take. I had to. <laughs> hey, don't you have to give spoiler alerts for people? No, oh, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> the unicorn thing has been attached to you for a very long time. Long time. Yeah. This is your second podcast. Yes, right? it is. Second ever, right? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, excited. Yeah, but they have their own thing, so and you know my thing is completely different. Oh, I'm sure it'll be very different. I mean, yeah, you're different people, so yeah. it would ideally be different. We don't want to listen to the same thing. Again. This is a long time ago. Yeah, two but years I, ago. Yeah, I remember I had a lot of fun on the life, podcast. Though. Life is a blur. <laughs> no, it was it was like a hilarious. It was a hilarious conversation because we're talking about how people view you and ideas of attractiveness and beauty and how, I mean, I think that those things are like very subjective and also, in a way. Not because society has a very clear idea of what's beautiful and what isn't. Yes. Yeah. So I thought that was. I mean, I like from what I remember. Oh my, so long ago, but I had a really great time talking about uh, all of those things. Yeah. You are thirty two this year, and you graduated from La Salle. Yes, correct. Yeah. There's a lot of videos from them as well. In YouTube, I was doing research on you. Okay. And I saw one video from La Salle you did. It was quite relevant to me. I felt. Okay. It was more of like speaking properly. And this is like way even before the. Wow, you're like pulling out stuff that I don't. You should have sent me all the reference references. Videos so I know you what can't I'm remember. gonna talk about so long. No, okay, ago. but basically, what the video was about was that you mentioned that the school taught you how to speak with you no know, with proper breath and all that. Oh, it gave me tools to learn how to speak. Yeah, like to sort of like express myself through my voice. I yes. feel like for me, I'm like a very anxious person, full of anxiety. Ah. So when I speak. It's like my words jumble up a lot because you know okay. I was never taught to speak properly. Right. I can do the recording, I can do the video and all that, but you know I was never a conversationalist per se. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that was very interesting. That's interesting that you you do that, but you also chose to do a podcast. Yeah. That's interesting. Is it a challenge for yourself? It was a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Because I could do all the graphics and all that, but. I want to do, grow as a speaker as well. And this is great like, because I'm not comfortable on camera. Yeah. So this is without a camera. Right. So I have this duplicitous relationship where I want to be seen but I don't want to be seen. Right. Okay. So the podcast is great So because I, I don't have to show my face. Fascinating. Yeah, But the pressure of having a camera on your face mm-hmm. you know, and not having a camera on your face is two different types of interviews. Right. Okay. Like This is more intimate setting, right. don't you think? I don't know, you know, because I guess... You've been on camera all the time. Yeah, I guess I'm very used to being in front of the camera, so yeah. it doesn't feel as scary to me. In fact, I remember before, like, I mean, I the idea of being a radio DJ, for example, scares me more than being on camera. Because I always feel like radio DJs have to come up with a lot of interesting things to talk about and they have to... Uh, Produce like, the show. Yeah, you can't yeah. have any dead air. And like, even this podcast, like, this would be something that I find harder or scarier to do than, say, something on TV. That's something you're more accustomed with. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's like familiarity. Yeah. Mm. So right here in Explanate, you're not exactly a stranger for Explanate as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Explanate royalty. <laughs> no yeah, I'm so We used to have to come here All the time for school Because you need to find scripts And you need to find like Stuff like When we were learning Songs and things I had to go and look, Find the scores and But mostly like The scripts and the books Yeah and you perform In a theatre yes, as well Yes right? correct Yeah yeah How did your career start What was the origin You mentioned you started Acting way before Click Network Yeah 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 right. I actually started Okay so when I was like Five or six years old. When I was younger, my parents sent me to speech and drama classes because I was very shy. And they sent me to class to kind of like bring me out of my shell. And then I kind of like kept sticking to speech and drama. And then when I went to school, I went to the drama club there. And so I continued with that. And then when I went to JC, I also did drama there. And after that, I went to La Salle. I studied acting. And so I guess it kind of just evolved naturally. I never knew I wanted to be a full-time actor. I mean, I enjoyed it because I loved working with people and I loved discussing ideas and rehearsing but I guess I didn't think that it was going to be a full-time job it was a very Singaporean kind of like you know maybe I'll do something else and do acting on the side but after La Salle I guess it kind of just kept going from there okay, so is that small gigs uh, how you stayed afloat 
for a while? When I first came out of the cell, I was doing this physical theatre group thing. And man, we got paid so little. But because we kind of saw it more as training, right? But we would train like four times a week. And over the course of like two years, three years, to like the first show took, I think, if I remember this correctly, one and a half years of rehearsals to put up the first show. And then we continued and did a second show. So that was kind of like my main thing. And then in between, I was starting to do stuff for like TV and I was also doing commercials. Yeah, so like that law. Okay, so when mm. did that transition to Click Network? Or did they find you or did you find them? Oh, Click Network was so random. Like, because my agency at that time, they sent me for an audition. And at that time, I really didn't even know what, like, what YouTube was. I didn't know anything about beauty. And they were like, oh, <laughs> just go for this internet show audition. And I was like, what? I, like, I totally did not understand this concept. So I went in for the audition and... I had watched a couple of beauty videos before that just to figure out what was going on. And then I went in for the audition and then I left thinking like, okay, that's never going to happen. Like, I'm not going to get this My sister is gig. a big fan of your YouTube Aww, makeup thing. Oh, thank yeah. you. She told me to tell you that. Oh, thanks. What's her sister's name? Sila. Hi, Sila. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I'm waving back for you. <laughs> <laughs> for her. Yeah, but then after that, it kind of like took off from there. Lor. It's just an ongoing thing that I do with Click. And yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun and hopefully we never stop. Okay, so you've never had a full-time job ever? No, never. Okay, is that, yeah. is that a scary That's thing? That's so weird. Yeah. I, I guess I don't know if it's scary or not because I've never had a full-time job. Yeah, but you've always been working and working non-stop, right? Right, yeah. You, you've never had like no jobs for a period of time? I th- No, yeah, I've been quite lucky in that that hasn't been the case. Okay, yeah. so you've never had to struggle to look for a work to do? Not so much struggling to find work to do, but I remember at one point I was very, very broke. Yeah. Okay. When I was first starting, I was like super broke. Because you're like doing work, but then the pay is like not great. So did you at that point in time felt that you had to find a full-time job or what made you persevere through that? Actually, finding a full-time job line. was never really an option, an option for me because I am i don't know that. I just never thought about that. Do you hone your skills through just doing the works or did LaSalle really help you build your oh, foundation? Oh, LaSalle really helped me so build much. Build the foundation. Yeah, no, I guess like in a way you kind of have a foundation because you're doing so much of it. But LaSalle really helped me to solidify that foundation, if that makes sense. And also a lot of things from before. Like for example, people used to tell me that I need to speak slower. But like you cannot... It's not like I was purposely trying to talk fast because I wanted to like piss them off or anything. Yeah. I just didn't know how to speak yeah, slower. Exactly. Yeah, but when I was Me in too. the cell, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when I was in the cell, they kind of like gave you tools on like controlling your breath, controlling your speech, controlling all those things. And then I was like, ah, oh, then it becomes more like I can accelerate, I can not, I can you know do a lot of things with your voice, which then becomes your tool. Yeah. I had no idea there were so many nuances when it comes to acting, like, you know, right. like speaking properly and all that. Actually, you know what? Like, I feel like a lot of these nuances we do naturally in real life. Mm. In, like, some people have it, people. some people don't have it. No, I think it's just different when it comes to acting because it's not just experiencing what you're doing. You also have to express certain emotions. So using your body as a tool to express the emotion of the character is very different from you as a person experiencing your emotions. Right. Yeah. For some reason, everywhere you've been, like, you know, Esplanade or LaSalle, they call you back, you graduate, and if you do stuff here, oh, right. they call you back just to share your experience. Right. Yeah, so you've done a little bit of something everywhere. Oh, right. Yeah. But Singapore is quite small, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm really grateful to be able to work with them. I mean, LaSalle gave me an incredible education. Like, I wouldn't be the person that I am without LaSalle. And also, Esplanade holds a lot of memories for me. It was where I had my first solo show. It was also where I did a show for the physical theatre group that I was in. And they're very supportive of the local scene. Yeah. Is there something that you haven't done yet? Because you've done quite a bit, like you know, right. producing, directing, theatre, acting. No, la, I haven't directed. But, but you did your own the unicorn thing, right? Yes, 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 yes. I mean, I put the, stuff the together and yeah. in some ways I give direction. Producing but I just don't call myself like director. a director or producer. I still feel most comfortable with actor. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just because it's the thing that I know best. Do you know what I mean? It's so 
I rather be known for the thing that I know best than other things that I'm like sort of like just dabbling in. Yeah. yeah. You seem to be working so hard, like even securing you for this podcast as well. It took a quite oh a while. Oh my god, yeah, I feel so yeah. bad about no, that. No, 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 don't, don't, feel bad. don't feel you're not the longest. <laughs> <laughs> like you seem to be constantly working, like you don't even have time to breathe. Or Sometimes, yeah. Have you ever worked to the point where you've like gotten sick? Because your job requires you to be healthy, healthy on camera, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have been like, Sometimes I get very tired and then you don't like feel like you're in the best of health. But like, I think not so bad. La. But I remember last time when I used to do productions, after the production finishes, then I'll have like a period of time where I'm just like out. You know what I mean? Like a flu or like something because like your body just like, okay, now I can rest. Is it just you don't refuse job? Like when like... No, comes, I do say take... no to things that I'm, that I don't feel are feel like right doing. for me or like... If I don't feel like it's right or I don't feel that I can fit into my schedule, then I mean, I don't work myself to the point where I like ping san. Lah. That's why the makeup artists are there. They do a good job. Oh, yeah, they help so much. Oh my God. A good makeup artist on set is just heaven sent. It's the best thing. Yeah. Do you sometimes miss like you're not always under the radar? Oh, no, lah, I feel like I, I don't feel like I'm like the like Bokana mob kind of. So, you know what I mean? You can still walk around Orchard Road yeah, without being approached. Yeah, I feel like in Singapore, we're quite respectful of like people. I mean, even if I mean, if I saw like Zoe Tay, <laughs> I love her. You know, I wouldn't like go up to her and be like, oh my <laughs> Your god, Your face oh my lit god. up when you mention it. <laughs> but it's kind of like, I think it's a generally quite respectful culture here. I mean, from what I've seen, yeah. Do you understand your audience... I'm talking about your Instagram. Right. Was that more of a boost from your Click Network stuff or? Oh, definitely Click. So Click Network yeah, was more had a hand in more of your Instagram following. Yeah, definitely. Like I swear, if not for Click Network and Julian, Julian is like the boss of Click Network. If not for her, I wouldn't even be online at all. Like really, I just wouldn't. You know, and I'm so glad that I am now. But like, it's just not a place that I would take to naturally. Like it took forever. <laughs> I mean, to set up a Facebook account and like even more forever to start a Twitter account which I don't even use now. I don't think I've even logged into forever. And then like Instagram was just like, oh my god, what is Instagram? Do you think you joined late or like you jumped to the bandwagon quite late? Late? Uh, I think late, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't one of the first few people on Instagram. Because you do a good job engaging your audience, you know, with your... Oh, thank you. Yeah, makeup stuff and all that. Because right. I'm thinking like if that's the your base of fans, right. that they love you for the click network stuff. Oh. That's how you keep them engaged continuously with... I think what's interesting with the internet is that it opens you up to a much larger audience. And also, it opens a lot of possibilities. When I was introduced to the internet through Click Network, then after that, I did this show called Unicorn Moment with Checkpoint Theatre. And because of the internet thing, because I had found this audience that was kind of like growing together with us, then we did, I did this show with Checkpoint Theatre called Unicorn Moment. And we did a cross-media production. So that means we did internet as well as theatre. So that was fascinating for me because we did a whole internet series, like a YouTube series, that eventually led to the theatre show. Oh. Yeah, and so that's what I love about the internet is that there's just so many possibilities. Opens up a lot of doors. Yeah, it does. And I'm forever grateful to Click Network for, and Jillian, actually Jillian, for introducing me to the internet. What do you like about doing this podcast? Why? Oh, you're turning the tables against me. (laughs) I've liked... The expect of the creative outlet for it. Okay. So, so marketing the podcast as well is a new thing for me. Like, you know, because okay. I've always been on the creative side. Adding marketing together with the creative aspect also was a very interesting thing to explore. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there's That's a lot of having a project for me to sink my teeth into. It's just the main thing. Like, something mm. like, you know, a pet project, like, you know, a brainchild of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something for you to like constantly think about and to yeah. work towards. Just oh, like, that's interesting. Yeah, just like you... You know, if you're, you, the, some of the projects that you did. Mm. Yeah, but doing this, you can actually like make a change, you know. Right. Have a bit of impact. Right. Some of the stories that I share from the guests mm. and people say, oh, this podcast with this person helped change my perspective. You know, I'm going to do this. So mm. that is very inspiring. Like, that's, right. That makes the whole podcast worth it. That's cool. That's really nice. Yeah, even though like it's not a, really a market for podcasts in Singapore. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah, it hasn't really caught on as much. Right. In the States, it's pretty big, right? Because in the States, a lot of people do, they have to drive very long distances so they like to listen to podcasts. Singapore is just a small dot. The like, <laughs> you know, US is like, it's you know, true. It's and much, the UK it's is, is it's yeah. really huge. Yeah. So how do you get approached to do the TED Talk? The TED Talk. That was very interesting. Yeah, the students from SMU got in touch and they were interested in having me on board. 
And I thought it sounded like an interesting challenge. So I said, okay, let's give it a shot. Yeah. I liked what you talked about on the TED Talk as well. Oh, thank you. That was very personal, right? You shared some personal stories, you know, like you talked to a friend who almost wanted to commit suicide. Oh, yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. Did you write the script and do you memorize everything that you had to oh, say? Oh, yeah, or? definitely. Because it was almost 10 minutes worth of speaking. Yeah, but I, it's okay because I'm, I'm quite used to memorizing things. So that's like okay for me. Yeah, it was more the public speaking aspect that was a bit scary for me because that is slightly different. Yeah, like I feel like with acting you are kind of like within the universe of the story, right? Whereas for public speaking, you are interacting with people who are physically there and you have to respond to how yeah. they re- respond to you. And yeah, so that actually was terrifying for me. It's a little bit like theatre. Oh no, actually that's the thing, it's different. Like, I feel like acting theatre is very different from doing... A, public speaking. A, a, yeah, from public speaking, yeah. Uh, why is that? Oh no, because like for... Okay, so for acting and for theatre, you are in a universe. You are in the world that your show has created. You are playing a character and all your lines are fixed, right? Whereas like for public speaking, you actually have to... You're talking, you're speaking directly to the audience, which is different from speaking to another character. Right. Yeah. So when you're acting, do you feel like you get a lot of chance to explore your chemistry with your co-host? Like, I mean, co-actors, sorry. Co-actors um, or co-actors. Yeah, I mean... That's what the rehearsals are for. What if sometimes you are not familiar with the person you're working with? Have there ever been like awkwardness? Like- oh, that's the beautiful thing about acting, right? Because like, even though you're not familiar with them, you have this common ground, which is the script. And you have the script that you are working with. You have characters that have been written and your characters are the ones who have to understand each other. How do you get into character? What's the process that you do? For me, I guess I'm first I need to try and understand the world within which these characters are operating. Like if it's like a different period, like more things about that time. And then also, I guess just trying to understand what the characters want from each other, why they're doing the things that they're doing, what this character wants, what is their goal, what drives them. This from stuff I listen to other podcasts. Yeah. Sometimes actors take their roles into their own hands. If they feel like something that they can contribute to the show, then they, they end up changing the script altogether. All right. Is that a luxury that is afforded to actors in Singapore? I think it depends on who you work with. And also it depends on the project. I mean, and how strongly you feel about your character? Well, no. I think for that, I feel it's always like, no matter how strongly I feel about a character, you have to respect the the creators yeah. do you know what I mean you have yeah. to respect the directors you have to respect um, the producers what they want to do you with the suggest, show you can suggest but of course yeah you can suggest but it's not a very collaborative kind of thing okay. but you I mean I wouldn't steamroll them into doing it lah. yeah yeah <laughs> okay yeah but I'm very opinionated so I will like give a lot of suggestions yeah. but it's never a you need to do this because that's not my place yeah what has been your favourite role to play my favorite role to play, it would be between two characters. One would be from the show called How to Be a Good Girl that I did for Hook. And then the other one would be Jing Fei from Marco Polo. Oh, I thought you were mm. going to say the one from Rubber. <laughs> oh, actually, that was a lot of fun too. Yeah. That was, that was a lot it, it of fun. It wasn't as it's risky, but it wasn't as sleazy as I thought. No! Yeah, oh no. my god, I don't understand why the movie had an RA rating. Like, yeah, it, it was just, yeah, no. It wasn't as suggest, like, it, it, was, was, it was suggestive, but it wasn't erotic or whatever. I thought it was very it, PG, it, actually. It was comedic. Yeah, it was comedic. And it was very best. sweet, and there was a lot of love, and yeah, I thought it was not, yeah, it was totally not. It was totally not Ari. Yeah, was it? <laughs> yeah. uh, how was the experience like? Like you know, having to do stuff like that, being in like you know sexual positions in front of a lot of people. Oh, um, is, is that your first time doing stuff like that? No, I mean I've had love making scenes before. Mm. Yeah, but that one was fun, and also I was around a group of people who were like they made me very comfortable, and I worked with them before. Everyone's very professional, so it's just okay lah. Okay. Have you ever kissed someone while you were in a relationship with someone else in a show? Like if you had to kiss? Yeah. Okay, so has that ever made your partner jealous? Oh, I think there were some partners that were would rather that not happen. Hmm. But they were all actually very respectful of the fact that, I mean, it's part of my job. Oh, yeah. okay. Always wondered what that was like. Would that affect your real life relationship and all that? Because oh. acting is not, that's your job. Acting, yeah. You know, but sometimes, you know, it's still emotionally of course. affects you in some way. Yeah, of course, of course. But no, I think I think they do know that I'm an actor. So, yeah. They have to grit I their mean, teeth and like... <laughs> well, I mean, if they're really not comfortable with it, then I would say, like, consider 
like reconsider her dating me lah. Do you know what I mean? Reconsider. Yeah, because yeah, you I, much rather have some of your mature perspective, like would not get jealous. Oh, I okay. I I wouldn't say mature because it's kind of like it's just different points of view. Hmm. You know what I mean? And they're totally entitled to it. Doesn't make them more mature or less mature. Like I think it's just really up to them and what okay. they're comfortable with. And if they know what they're comfortable with and what they're not, then then they have to make the decision. No? Okay. Mm. What is ASMR eating? Oh my god. I, I still can't remember the uh, auto acronym. sensory auto sensory meridian response. Yeah, oh, I love yeah. it. Okay, so I did a bit of research but still a bit confused about it. From what I understand, are you talking about going to YouTube and watching people eat? Yes, but okay, but this these people are eating like with a mic very close to them. So you just listen to them like Slurping. eating. Yeah, eating and chewing and all that. Like I love it. <laughs> so like the fun is when they eat things with different textures. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, there's the type with talking and there's the type with no talking or like whispering. So I like I like the type with like no talking and just eating. Like very crunchy food. What kind of effect does it have on you? Like, I just feel so happy. <laughs> to, to hear the sound? Yeah. It makes me happy and it makes me feel quite calm and like very shook. <laughs> The funny thing about this is that it's, you're not the only one. Like it's, There's a huge cult following like, yes, it's of massive. people who, who like to ASMR millions eat. and millions of people yeah, yeah. actually the first it's, time it's I heard hidden, about ASMR it's a hidden uh, what was that word hidden something that people enjoy like, right like, yeah is it still hidden though like I, I feel I, like I, it's quite mainstream I think now it's mainstream but I think some okay. people appeal to it some people are not appealed yeah, to it yeah I have some friends who hate hate it yeah. like they cannot deal <laughs> like they're just like oh my god that's disgusting but I'm like oh my god what do you mean <laughs> this is so much fun does it have to be the specific food like if you don't enjoy the food then you won't enjoy listening to that sound oh that one I don't know but I look I generally look for food that I like to listen to <laughs> okay. like cheesy instant noodles okay or like uh, cheesy corn dogs ice eating is also a big thing like and they have different types of ice yeah. and then there's also like this thing called ping tang hulu hmm. which is like fruits that are covered in sugar like hardened sugar so it's really magnified yes audio it's amazing yeah, it's so good interesting yeah when I first heard about it like many years ago it was just people talking into the mic hmm. like this yeah but I never got a kick out of that like I didn't quite like it how yeah. do you come across ASMR eating specifically? The food one. Uh, actually, I don't know, you know. I think I was just randomly scrolling through Browsing. Instagram one day. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, this is amazing. And then so then now my Discover feed, you know, Instagram has a yeah. Discover. <laughs> yeah, <everything laughs> like mostly all eating. Wow. <laughs> it's and like they know me. Yeah. I find fascinating. Like all you have to do is like eat in front of the camera and sometimes there's like millions and millions of views. Yeah. Just for that. Actually before, okay, so ASMR now with the eating, right? Like, I think before it was also just people like mukbang, where they eat a lot of food. Mm. Just, and... It, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, a and, lot and of food. And it's like a petite person as well. Yes. Not, not like a huge... Usually like a tiny yeah. person eating an insane amount of food. So yeah. that was something that I never really got a kick out of. Like, I thought it was like, okay, I... I mean, it seems like fun, yeah. but it's not really my thing. But when it was like ASMR mukbang, I was like, whoa, this <laughs> is everything. <laughs> you also opened me up to this whole thing. Do you uh, like it? No, not, I mean, oh. I would say I don't like it. I haven't appreciated it yet. Because right. I haven't really gone to YouTube and type, you know, food or you know, people eating food. Right. But I've, I've come across stuff like people recording themselves studying. Huh? How does that yeah, work? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure what the uh, how this correlates to that, but... They just record them studying and then there's also millions and millions of views. So I, I don't oh, know if interesting. it's... Maybe it's ASMR studying. I, is it a I, sound I, thing? Are they writing a lot? No, it's just them studying. That's all. Oh, maybe maybe people study together yeah, there's, with there's, them. See, there's another universe out there. That's quite cute because with the eating thing, right? The mukbang thing, what people would do is like they would eat and then they would like play these videos of people eating and it's like they're having a meal together. Mm. So as they are eating and the person is eating, they will like send them gifts or like they will send them like roses, flowers. I had a friend who used to, when I was working in a boxing gym the other time, mm-hmm. he was so broke that he played a video of nice food and he was just eating plain rice 
It was <laughs> no no no. It, it wasn't oh, no so no. Funny. No like he, he had money. He just wanted to save money. Oh, it, it, was, it wasn't okay. like a, yeah thing. But it was quite funny how he just visualized the food. Did like it help he, his food taste better? He said it. He said it did. That's so cute. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting, right? Oh, yeah. but that's YouTube changes our lives more than we think. Yeah, my God, YouTube is amazing. I've learned so much, so much on YouTube. Yeah, and the fact that people can earn millions and millions of dollars yeah. just being a YouTuber. Like, what are we doing with real jobs, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends what you're willing to put in effort for. Law. Because actually, the full-time YouTubers that earn a lot of money, it's not easy, man. Yeah, it's, it's like a from commitment what I, by Yeah, itself, they're constantly churning out content. That's no joke. Yeah. Like, every day coming out with stuff to talk about or, like, videos to do. I, I don't know how people do it. <laughs> like, if not for the producers at Click Network, I would be... I don't know. This is tough. <laughs> And you also mentioned you like slime. What's slime? Oh my god, I love slime! So slime is another thing. Well, it's like, like an ASMR thing. So it's like basically, I don't know how they use it, but like glue, there's a, they do something to the glue and they, I don't know, they do something and then they activate it. I have no idea how you make slime. But then all these people, they're just, just like playing with it. It's like... Oh, immediately when you say slime, it. I thought of organic slime, like, you know, your snot or something, but... That's disgusting. That's disgusting, yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've seen videos of people making slimes. Right, those, yeah, yeah, those yeah. They're so pretty. Do you watch that as well? Like you just type how to make slime. No, I don't watch how to make slime. I watch people playing with slime. Okay, like Play-Doh lah. It's so much better than play I mean, okay, for me, I don't like the texture of Play-Doh. It leaves like a residual Yeah, I really don't like the residue and I, I don't like the smell. Yeah. So like when I look it at slime, like really, you like the smell of Play-Doh? Okay, well, okay, okay, I mean, different people like yeah. this. I like ASMR, you don't like ASMR. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> preference. Yeah, so the slime, okay. I, I just find it looks so pretty and they always have like a lot of glitter and then they have those like fishbowl beads and mm. like foam and there's so many things. I just love it. Did, have you ever tried to make one? No. No. Actually, I've bought a couple of times but the funny thing is after I buy, I never use. For some reason, I don't feel like taking it out of the bottle to like play with it. Yeah, but I like watching people play with it. Ah, yeah. okay. I've seen this video before where like simple pleasures of life like you know you just put your hand in a in a bowl oh, of rice it, it feels good that sounds you know nice. like small things like you know farting or right. or like, it's pleasurable things that sense you know pleasure oh, that makes to your sense. Head. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that makes I sense I feel like the slimes and ASMR I think the same thing for you yeah I think yeah. so you find joy in weird stuff yeah <laughs> <laughs> I find I find joy in the little things in the little things yeah <laughs> Also, you mentioned to me like you wanted to talk about being kind to one another. Oh, well, oh yeah, because you were asking me what am I passionate yeah, about. topics about. So I guess if, like, if you're talking about passionate, like if you're asking me what I'm passionate about, yeah, I think that the idea of being kind to ourselves and being kind to each other, that is something that... Oh, it's a weird thing. I don't know how to say it. Like, I don't know if I would say it. Do you think it's easier for people to gravitate to being a bad person? Why do you ask that? And why do you phrase it that way? To correlate it to acting, right? Mm-hmm. This was something that came up when I did a podcast with Paul Foster. Normally, he's just a nice person. Okay. Right. So sometimes he, when he does villainous role, yeah, he said that he just thrives in that position because he said that he said that he believes it's easy for people to just do bad things, right? Yeah, okay. Because you get to be the person on camera, right? And you get to do things that you don't normally get away in real mm. life because you, you know can go to jail. That makes sense. Or get caught by police or right. whatever. Right. But what's your position on that? Do you think that it's easier for people to be a bad person or a good person. Right. Well, I guess regarding the Paul Foster one, I think that's also, it's not so much wanting to be a bad person, but exploring a side of you that you don't get to explore in real life. And Mm. also when you're acting, there's no real life consequences. Yeah, that's right. Do you know what I mean? And it doesn't affect anyone outside of like the scene. Yeah. Right? So it's not like you're actually hurting someone. And whether it's easier for people to gravitate towards being bad or good. I think it really depends. I guess it also depends on whether you believe people are, in- are inherently good or inherently bad, right? And I mean, I would like to believe that people are inherently good. Yeah, and that under different circumstances, under duress, under like the need to survive, I do think that people might feel that they have to do things that they would normally consider bad, in order to survive. Yeah. Yeah, but I think, uh, yeah, I don't know, bad and good is a very kind of, subjective, yeah, yeah. thing, right? Some of the worst things I feel like people could do is take advantage of someone's kindness. Yeah. Yeah, you know, recently I've read 
there's this GoFundMe thing where there was a beggar who oh the homeless man the homeless man and then they and then they, the couple yeah and the couple and they did a GoFundMe and then it turns out it was a scam that, that was yeah. like yeah you know, they came up with they cooked out the whole story about yeah. how the guy yeah. had that makes you not want to donate anymore right like yeah so you give your fifty bucks or whatever yeah. to that GoFundMe yeah you realize that someone took it and then bought a house or yeah something. okay so for context what happened was this couple got this homeless guy in together to sort of like con people. So they came up with this story about how he had given her his last $20 right, to get guess. guests, yeah, right? And car. then she found out about his story and they uh, they wanted to raise money together for him and they ended up raising like $400,000 or something like that, right? Mm. And then it turned out the whole thing was fake. Mm. So I, th- it does make you kind of sad because you feel like you can't trust people yeah, that people are out to con you and that's a sad feeling. Do you feel like you have a social responsibility? You can make a change because you have such a huge following and then you can help to spread uh, the, the idea of being kind to one another. Do you feel like you have a social responsibility for that? I feel that all of us have a social responsibility to do things that can help make the world a better place. Yeah, I, I think it's just like we're here on this earth. We mm. should leave it a little bit better than... Before we... Be- yeah, before be- yeah before we came in. Yeah, correct, yeah. correct. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I feel lucky that I do have a platform, and I feel grateful for the platform. But I don't think the social responsibility like kind of comes from that. Yeah. But then again, okay, I like I say I feel we all have a social responsibility to do that. But also, I don't think that Ob- you need to not obligated. Yeah, to. we're not obligated to because you 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 just have to live your life the way is right the way that is right for you. Right, so I kind of contradicted myself there, but I kind of stand by it. <laughs> it's okay. Having done so much after 32 years, done projects after projects, do you feel fulfilled? Fulfilled? Uh? Mm. That's an interesting question. Why Why you ask that? Being someone who does video, there was a point of time where I feel that I don't want to do video anymore. Okay. Uh, I wanted to do something else. So okay. I feel like that's okay, a chapter of my life I've, I've done on a chapter close. So I want to do something like, you know, podcasting or audio or something else or boxing. Mm. So I was just wondering whether you want to venture into something else, like, you know, other things like not even acting related, maybe sports. So it's like, how fulfilled are you in terms of what you've done Mm. with your acting career? Right. I don't know that. I feel that, like for me, it's really, I'm very happy if I just get to work with people that I can bounce ideas off and that people I can collaborate and create things with so it doesn't matter which field is in I feel that I will be happy if I'm able to meet people that I can sort of like click with mm. is there other aspects of your acting that you haven't explored I still want to do an Usia show I want to do a show and I'm doing like Usia you know what Usia is like you know the olden times the period dramas where oh. they're doing all this like martial arts is and it like, like something m- like Marco Polo yeah but I didn't get to like run across the roofs and I didn't oh. get to do like okay. crazy like crazy fight choreography like Jackie Chan Kind of movie is yeah, Shaolin. Well, it's not like olden times, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's like way before like growing up. Like, I, I, Wait, olden no, times. this is like really Yeah, yeah, olden way times. before like when yeah, you're wearing yeah. all the traditional yes. outfits and all that. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So like for Marco Polo, I got to do a sword dance, but yeah. I really would have loved to do a fight scene in that. You yeah. know, like with wire work where they like chuck you around and you get to like cut wheels in the air. <laughs> the sword thing, was that something that you trained for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sword they fighting? We had a... So the stunt team trained me for that. We had a, a trainer who was like an Ushu champion. And so he choreographed it and trained me. And also another girl who, she's from Japan and she was a stunt woman. So they kind of like worked on it together. And then we came up with a choreography and I had to learn it over like a few months. Oh, mm. do you think it's a great experience adding that physical role? To your oh, acting. so amazing! So ex- like such an amazing experience. Like I actually really love like expressing stuff with like my body. Mm. So I love being able to do. I did a Chinese fan dance as well as a sword dance, and that was a lot of fun. Ooh, yeah. Do you still have any fears when you are on set? Like when you have a start a new project, mm. do you fear messing up your lines, or what are some of the things that concerns you? I think I do get scared that I don't do the character justice. I do get scared that like that I won't be fleshing out like a full character. Okay. Yeah. I mean I do think about that. I'm like, okay, wait, have I done enough here? Does this show what like the character's supposed to be doing? Has that ever happened before? Like some of your older works? 
I think every time I look back, I always feel like, oh, I could have done more. I'm just like that. Perfectionist. Yeah, I'm never yeah. really quite fully happy with what I've done, but I also am trying to be a bit kinder to myself when I look back on my work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you enjoy the preparation or execution? Preparation. Yeah. I love rehearsals. I Like, there's the thing that I loved most about acting, like being in the rehearsal room, rehearsing with like other actors, the directors, like discussing the characters, discussing the scene, that makes me so happy. But like, I mean, I enjoy that too, but I think my favourite part is really rehearsals. the rehearsals. Okay. I wanted to ask you about what's on Spotify, but you already did like a Q&A yesterday. Someone beat me to that question. Oh, what was that song that you played? The Moana song. Oh yeah, yeah, Moana How song. I mean, I love Disney. Yeah. I'm so a Disney what, girl. What's some of the things that you listen on Spotify? Let me see. When you commute. When I, actually, I don't really listen to music when I commute. So I listen to my Disney. And then also... Yeah, I listen to a range of things. I like Brutes. And then there's... B-R-U-T-E-S? B-R-O-O-D-S. Brutes? Yeah, oh, okay, Brutes. okay. Is that a band? I th- yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad. You see, I don't know who they are. Like, oh, I, I do, but I don't. But I don't. You see, when I listen to music, I don't necessarily go and like find out about the band. Mm. It's, it's just terrible. like the song. I just like the song. Oh, no, that's, that's fine. <laughs> I kind of like listen, oh, this sounds nice. And I add. sometimes I'll, like, I'll hear a song. And I'm like, I love it, but I don't know the singer and I don't know the title. That, that's fine. <laughs> For me, it's not genre specific. If I like the artist and I like the singer, then I just like that artist and singer. So sometimes yeah. I hate the question when people say, what kind of music do you listen to or yeah, what kind of genre because yeah. I like everything I can listen to metal music you know if, yeah. if I like the artist mm. yeah in a certain mood like if you're under depression do you listen to music to help yeah, I mean, yeah your it feel, to, like, express your feelings yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah you do like slower type of, like that kind of slower type music yeah Westlife Whereas like, oh well, Backstreet Boys always makes me happy. So the so do the Spice Girls. Yeah, Spice Girls. Yeah, but usually like if I'm in that kind of mood, I just listen to more chill music so I can just kind of like be with myself. Is there a favourite artist that you have? Celebrity crushes? As in like actor or like... No, no, like musician, sorry. Musician? Oh. I mean, I still love my Backstreet Boys Backstreet and Boys. Spice Girls. Do you go to the concert when they come to Singapore? I did, yeah, you I did. did. I wish Spice Girls were coming. It's nice that they still have that longevity to get yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's the, really cool. the band. What are you working on nowadays? I just finished shooting the second season of Meet the MP. Mm. Is it with Aaron Aziz? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How is he? <laughs> oh, he's great. He, is he living in Malaysia or living in Singapore? I think he's based in KL. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. So we just finished shooting that and I'm shooting a travel show now called You Deserve a Break. We're on the second season of that also. You might want to take that title. <laughs> You know, as, no. as an advice oh no but we find well, we really find these amazing people and they do so much for the people around them that like you know and they hardly take breaks for themselves so it's really nice to be able to kind of take them away for a while okay what is one thing that you've learned from acting or through your whole experience that you can apply in real life huh interesting I feel that I always kind of like learn from the characters that I play. They become a part of you? A bit, yeah. Because I mean, a, a part of you becomes them yeah. and a part of them like sort of becomes you. So I, I just picked up a lot from them like over the years. Yeah, like the way that they would react to a situation, the way that they would phrase something and how they would stand up for themselves or how they would allow themselves to be vulnerable. I think that that's something that I've picked up from all the characters that I've played over the years, yeah. Okay. Any words for your fans and listeners who are listening to the podcast? Thanks for listening and thank you for all the love and support. Yeah. Where can they find you on social media? You can find me at Unshuen on Instagram and on Facebook, I think. Not on Twitter because you're not active there. Well, you can find me there too, but I'm not active, so yeah. not much point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's very approachable. One of the friendlier and easier people to communicate with. <laughs> All I did was just send you a DM and then you, you replied me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you so much for doing this. No, thank you for having me. Yeah. And I hope that you continue to do this. And yeah. I, yeah. Hope we, I hope we become friends. La. <laughs> we yep. shall see. We shall see. <laughs> right. Thanks, Yuan. Thank you.